Rumors are swirling that OpenAI is considering an extremely high-priced plan for its future more advanced models. And by high-priced, I'm talking $2,000 a month. On today's episode, we are going to talk about why that is somewhat less crazy than it seems. At least I think there are ways to look at it as such. To kick off, however, we're also going to do a little bit of catch-up on previous OpenAI stories that we covered over the last week or so. One of the big stories last week was that presentation from OpenAI Japan that listed GPT Next as 100 times more powerful than GPT 4. If you remember in that episode, one of the things that I was wondering is whether GPT Next was referring to an actual specific model or just a category of general things in the future. Now, I noted that even if it was that, which seemed most likely to me, it probably wasn't a great idea to put that image on a slide. And indeed, it does appear that GPT Next is not a new model, but just a general future state. From Mashable, an OpenAI spokesperson has confirmed to Mashable that the term GPT Next, written in quotations on the slide, was simply a figurative placeholder to indicate how OpenAI's models could evolve exponentially over time. The spokesperson also clarified that the line graph in the slide was illustrative, not an actual timeline of OpenAI's plans. So, so much for getting a 100x more powerful model this year. Another interesting story that's been swirling around is OpenAI's latest raise, at something like a $100 billion plus valuation. Thrive Capital has been widely reported to be the lead of that round, leading to a recent piece in the information called Why Josh Kushner Became OpenAI's Fundraising Sherpa. The piece begins, In mid-July, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman flew into Idaho to mingle with entertainment and tech elites at the annual Sun Valley Retreat. Among those by Altman's side was Josh Kushner, founder of Thrive Capital, the New York VC firm that had led a recent share sale valuing the ChatGPT maker at $86 billion. Less than a month later, Altman gave Kushner a pat on the back, replying to news that Thrive had just raised $5 billion in new funds. Altman posted on X that among the, quote, many great investors he's worked with, there's no one I'd recommend more highly than Josh. So what else do we learn from this round? Well, a couple of things. First, it sounds like the valuation might be up over $120 billion, not just $100 billion. Second, it sounds like part of the role that Kushner is playing is not just investing capital, but also organizing more capital. Again, from that same piece, OpenAI requires so much capital that Kushner could play a key role in arranging funding as well. Others also speculate that it's at least a little bit about raising the profile of Josh Kushner and Thrive in general. The founder of another large VC firm said that Thrive's massive investment is, quote, Josh's effort to be the guy you call an AI. It makes him very visible and gives Thrive the appearance of having, quote, unlimited check writing power. Interesting stuff if a little bit insider baseball, but not the thing that we want to focus on today. What we want to focus on is shifts in how OpenAI is thinking about its business model. And one more story before we get to this theoretical $2,000 price point. At the end of last week, OpenAI announced that it had hit 1 million paid users for its enterprise offerings. That's up from 600,000 corporate chat GPT accounts back in April. In terms of additional real information, there's not that much. For example, one of the things that we don't know is whether the increase came from new clients or expansion within organizations. We did find out that just under half of the corporate users are based in the United States, with Germany, Japan, and the United Kingdom being the other popular markets. All right, and so this gets us to this $2,000 a month report. This comes once again from the information where they wrote last week, how much would you be willing to pay for ChatGPT every month? $50? $75? How about $200 or $2,000? That's the question facing OpenAI, whose executives we hear have discussed high price subscriptions for upcoming large language models, such as OpenAI's reasoning-focused Strawberry and a new flagship LLM dubbed Orion. The piece continues, In early internal discussions at OpenAI, subscription prices ranging up to $2,000 per month were on the table, said one person with direct knowledge of the numbers, though nothing is final. Now, the information seized on the idea that this represented an indication that revenue wasn't keeping up with costs. They write, It suggests that the paid version of ChatGPT, which was recently on pace to generate $2 billion of revenue annually, largely from $20 per month subscriptions, may not be growing fast enough to cover the outsized costs of running the service. They continue, And more advanced models such as Strawberry and Orion may be more expensive to train and run than prior models. The flip side, they say, is that a high price point would also mean OpenAI believes its existing white collar customers of ChatGPT will find these upcoming models a lot more valuable to their coding analytics or engineering work. And this is largely the two sides of the conversation that you saw on Twitter slash X. X user Bob E. Hayes writes, Tell me things are bad without telling me things are bad. Report, OpenAI considers $2,000 monthly LLM subscriptions. OK Egg writes, OpenAI's $2,000 a month feels like a clumsy way to address the dilemma. One, achieving AGI requires monstrous investments. Two, need a mass consumer product to recoup. Three, must limit genuine AGI to a select elite. AI entrepreneur Bindu Reddy writes, OpenAI is considering 2K a month to access their top models. All kidding aside, this will be a Vision Pro level disaster. I hope it's a joke. 
digital spaceport writes, a $2,000 a month subscription is going to appear to those on lower tiers very negatively. Rich get richer stratification maximalism is how it will be labeled. So in these few tweets, you get a pretty good breadth of the conversation on the negative side. That, on the one hand, maybe this suggests that there's trouble with the OpenAI business model. Or even if there's not, that it would somehow represent a failure of the market to only make the most advanced models available to those who already have every advantage, at least financially speaking. That wasn't the only take, though. Professor Ethan Malik writes, I have no idea if the 2K a month price rumors about advanced open AI models are true, but it would represent a move from thinking about AI as a co-intelligence for each person to AI as independent worker. And I think this is the nut of it. Swix, for example, writes, I think it is a very bullish sign that OpenAI is considering $2,000 a month subscriptions. This is what taking AI employees seriously looks like, a level three AI product. Now, what he's referring to is OpenAI's recently announced, or better put, recently leaked levels or stages of artificial intelligence. Level one is chatbots, which are AI with conversational language. Level two is reasoners with human level problem solving. Level three is agents or systems that can take actions. Level four are innovators, AI that can aid in invention. And level five are organizations or AI that can do the work of an organization. And basically, Sean's argument here is that if an AI is powerful enough to do the work of a human, $2,000 a month starts to look a lot more reasonable. You see that conversation play out everywhere. On that same Bindu Ready post that I mentioned before, someone responded, if it can replace an entry-level software engineer, that's still a 4 to 6x cost reduction. To which Bindu responded, it can't. And so indeed, we have some skepticism of actual capabilities here as well. John Gilhooley writes, what is the next limit of human productivity? OpenAI's rumored $2,000 a month price tag moves it from consumer tool to employee replacement. This got me thinking. If the new reasoning models could work perfectly, could they actually replace an employee? They'll still need someone giving them direction, so the benefit has to be either in the quality of output or the speed, likely both. Imagine having a magic button that completes most base work for you in a few seconds. You'd still need to give clear instructions and review outputs, as you'd have with most entry employees, but now your cycles are much, much faster. Suddenly, you're going from making a few decisions a day to dozens or hundreds. Your quote-unquote workers no longer need time to go off and complete tasks. They just immediately deliver results and can move on to the next decision. Decision fatigue is going to become the new productivity-limiting factor. The human brain can only handle so many decisions before it starts to falter. Sure, AI will continue to improve in its ability to handle more high-level instructions like find me more users, but it will still require direction. It will still be a while before we reach the it's AI turtles all the way down stage of the world. And between here and there, we'll have a world where those who can make hundreds of well-reasoned decisions per day are going to outperform those who simply produce high-quality granular work. Mastering the art of rapid, continual reasoned decision-making could become the next career challenge for many. Now, this moves us into a conversation around what the destiny of today's workers is in a world where we really have AIs that can do independent work. Later this week or this weekend, we'll do a long-read-style episode from a piece from March from Noah Smith called Plentiful High-Paying Jobs in the Age of AI. However, at this point, you may be also asking, what are the chances this is just a dumb report and people are speculating about nothing? Ada McLeod jokingly summarized it this way. He said, the information says, the absolute highest and most absurd price floated for ChatGPT was 2000 a month, but the idiot OpenAI employee who suggested that has now been fed to the basement Shoggoth and will never speak again. Seven OpenAI spokespeople have reached out and confirmed they will not price it this high. Twitter, holy crap, OpenAI is crazy. Did you hear they're going to ship strawberry tomorrow for 2K a month? Morons, nobody will pay that. To which Sean Ralston, who I believe used to work at OpenAI, although I don't think does anymore, responded, was an internal convo about enterprise accounts with hundreds of licenses, not individual users. And whatever the right of this Sean has or not, it certainly seems possible that this is a big report about a very exploratory meeting where someone decided to humor someone else and write $2,000 a month down on a whiteboard, and that became a whole story that we're discussing. However, I think why it's resonant and worth the discussion is that it really does get us thinking, again, as Ethan Mollick put it, about the move from AI as co-intelligence for each person to AI as independent worker. There are some who believe that will never happen. There are many who believe it will happen in a fitful, non-linear way. But it's certainly a conversation that's going to come up a lot more as capacities increase. For now, I think it's fairly safe to say that at these levels, I don't think we're going to be seeing a $2,000 a month ChatGPT anytime soon. But you never know. Stranger things have happened. That is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.